Hello, friendly audience, people that watch my channel. This is going to be like a 25-minute vlog, uh, but it's really not entertaining. It's actually pretty boring. Uh, this is just a slice of life of what my life is like. It's just me and my dad going to the gym and talking and ranting in the car. The audio is pretty bad because I didn't realize when you record in a car, you shouldn't have both windows down on the highway. So, um, I'm not expecting a lot of people to watch this. I'm not expecting the watch time to be good. People are probably going to watch like three minutes and be like, what the, what the, what, what is this? And just click off. But it's a little slice of my life. And I like watching slices of life. Just seeing two people in a car talking. I think that stuff's interesting. But I cannot expect my audience to think it is. Anyways, hope you guys are doing well. Enjoy this vlog. This is how a vlog would go. Hey guys, it's us hey. going to the gym. <laughs> um, this app allows me to secretly record. I can do this and it's a black screen. I do this thing called fly on the wall recording where I'll record people without them really knowing. I, I do it when I hang out with Matt a lot. Yeah. But I, if you, I, you should be able to have a wire with a small camera on it. Yeah, you could get like fake glasses up, but they don't record a lot of storage. But um, yeah. Oh, when um, when me and Matt were in Ashton, Carolina, Asheville, we had to stay at his cousin's house. And of course, I'm trying to make a documentary on the road trip, so I'm secretly filming me and Matt, and whoever's in the background just happened to be recorded yeah so i'm filming and honestly i'm filming matt's cousin and her husband and um he caught me recording them. and here's the thing is i kept telling them i didn't know how to operate my iphone because i had just gotten it yeah and they were like well let me let me look at it let me look at your uh, photos and I'm thinking, I just secretly recorded them. If they look at it, <laughs> and I, I would not give up my phone. I wouldn't do it. And eventually, and, and I think Matt's cousin thought I was like a pedophile. And I had like nude, underage, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because, they're thinking of worse, of course. Because she starts going, yeah, we know this guy that was attracted to minors. And, and I'm sitting there thinking, I can either confess that I was recording them, or two, let them think I'm a pedophile. I went with number two. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to the gym, and we hope the steam room Nazi isn't there. Note: the guy that we refer to as the steam room Nazi is this old douchebag who always walks into he one he stays at the gym all day, and he only uses the steam, and he always comes in and checks to make sure we're not shaving in there, or doing this thing where you spray water at the thermometer so the steam will keep going. This guy is a douche and we hate him and we're probably eventually gonna kill him. Did you know they released a Jeffrey Dahmer series on Netflix and they tagged it as LGBT? Oh And shit. the LGBT were super mad. How funny would that be if, yeah. um, <laughs> if like Fox or like CNN or something, they did like a LGBT, LGBT month thing yeah. And they were like, here's a documentary on John Wayne Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. Some of yeah, our most him. famous homosexuals. Yeah. That'd be hilarious. They're a fucking hero. Me, me and Perry went to a meeting the other night. And it was at that, you know that Trinity Church we went to when we were kids? Yeah. And Perry went on a, on, it was his turn to talk. Yeah. And Perry didn't even really talk about sobriety. He just talked about killing people. The last thing you want to do when you're about to cap somebody is you don't want the gun to jam. And a 38 doesn't jam. And if you're good enough with a gun, you don't have to have 12, 20, 15 in a clip. All you need is six. And it was so funny because everybody at the meeting was like, You got a gun right now? Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I don't even, I mean, if he's just all still act like, want to see my knife? I'm working. Man, you, you don't fucking pull a knife out and say, look at this knife I'm, this knife I'm working on. I'm like, 
They don't know you from fucking Adam, Barry. Yeah. I wouldn't feel safe with someone approaching me with a fucking nine-inch blade. Like, well, Barry, he's probably on his like 15th knife. He makes knives, yeah. and like he throws them at the tree, and he's pretty good at it. But I'm like, if we have an SHTF shit hits the fan moment, throwing knives ain't gonna do nothing. No. You need an AK-47. Yeah. You know, I, you expect, when you go to the gym, you kind of expect a macho vibe, kind of like prison. Yeah. But so far, we've gone to the gym 20 times, and there's always somebody that comes up and messes with us. Yeah. And, and I'm at the point where I act crazy. If you act crazy, that will repel people from messing with you. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're, they're just, they, well, well, it, yeah. It's their domain. If people are trying to control, they think this is their world. Yes. And they want to create this fucking perfect world mm -hmm. around them. Now, that thing with the weights. And we're walking down, and he starts going, Yeah, that guy, man, telling me to put the weights back. And I was like, is that what happened? And he went, yeah. That guy came up to me and told me to put the weights back. And all of a sudden, we just looked at each other. And we knew. Because that's my dad, man. I, I love that, man. Greatest father ever. And he went, let's go back. And I was like, all right. And we knew at that moment, we're like, somebody disrespected my dad. I kind of get it in a way we're that leaving the weights on, the leaving the weights on there like these guys are new. Who knows we're not? He's never seen us before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I've started taking the weights off, and like I'm not going to create animosity in a place where I want to be. But exactly. this Nazi down there, he he's a completely different fucking animal. There's something really wrong wrong with him. And, and he, the the bad part is he's probably friends with everybody. So if we start shit with them, uh, you know, a lot of other people just tolerate him because they want to just. He he kind of seems like either an alcoholic or an ex-alcoholic. Um, yeah. I can always sniff out alcoholics, but yeah. um, that one day we went into the steam room, and so, so you gotta to get the steam going, you gotta spray that thing. Yeah. And he comes he comes in and he goes, don't don't do that, don't don't spray. Don't do that. And afterwards, I walked up to him and I said, Hey, are you security? Do you work here? And he's, yeah. he's like, No, I don't work here. Uh, and I was like, Oh, because you seem like you work here because you, you, you're in love with the rules, you know? Yeah. And that was a direct insult to this guy. Yeah. I said, I, you know. But I want to I, I, I just get in his face and be like, Hey, man, don't fuck with me because I got nothing to lose. I got nothing. Yeah, or, or just like, you know, I'll let you know whenever I feel like I need to answer to you. Yeah. yeah. Just just leave the steam room freshly shaven. Yeah. And go, I got a nice close shave. Yeah. A nice close one and then go like this. Go like this. <laughs> Douchebag. For some reason, a lot of my friends or old friends are getting into boxing. They're joining boxing gyms. Like my friend David, he lives right up the street. Uh -huh. He joined a boxing gym and he said it's all inclusive, yeah. which means no macho masculinity behavior. Yeah. And you're not allowed to be mean or insult people. Yeah. Because we live in a society where the young, young people are pussies now. Yeah. They can't. If I want to join a boxing gym, I want people to be macho and cruel and mean. Because oh, yeah. that's a good motivator. Like, you know, every time we get messed with by the steam room Nazi here, yeah. it, I seriously, I lift harder. Yeah. So I thought it was gonna be closed because it's Columbus Day. It's good, it's open. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hey, do you guys still have free yoga classes? Um, yes. It's not in this building though? Well, two of them are offered here. Uh -huh. The gentle yoga is offered at the telly, but the yoga and the yoga for athletes are offered. What about like aerobics and bike classes? Are those free? Um, yep, they're, yep. But you the, ma your spot. the massages cost money, right? Yes. Oh, cool. Okay. Cool. Hello. 
See, we're, you and I are so friendly. That's why I don't get why people would want to mess with us, you know? Yeah, what? You and I are so friendly. Yeah. Why would people want to mess with us here? All right, we need one more tent. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, so you're aware these are 35s, right? Yeah. Okay. That should be the same what I did before. What do you want? It? You want the shot to be from the back or the front? Uh, uh from the front. Okay. Yeah, I did five times last time. How many do you think you can do this time? Seven. Seven, okay. You sure I shouldn't stand behind? No. Maybe no. when you hit five, I'll go behind. Yeah, I'm not. Okay. Five. Yeah. I, I know, I, I could see it. It's hard, man. It, it's, it's hard to do less and then more. So, mind you, before I do this, uh -huh. in 2019, I was putting two tens on this. Yeah. And I struggled with that. Yeah. Mind you, I haven't eaten today. Okay. Got it. Oh my God. You know what muscles I'm starting to get? Right here, right here see this? Yeah. Uh, I think that that's from push-ups. Yeah. I think push-ups do that. Yeah. All right, what are you, I'm gonna do, uh, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like those. Okay. This one? Is that hard? Is that a lot of weight or? That looks good. I tried to do 25. All right. Yeah. I got it. I, I couldn't do 25 because yeah. we already benched. My muscles are already sore. Yeah. We, we went hard. Today, I think for the camera, yeah. I pushed harder than I normally do. Yeah. See, hey, don't lose the point with you though because you're young. Uh-huh. Your body will get so adapted to this, you won't even be sore anymore. With yeah. me, it's starting to feel like I'm going to be, I don't mind being sore. Uh -huh. I mean, but in the past, like 10 years ago, when I was working with Shane, uh -huh. I was doing more, and I wasn't feeling it. Oh, That's yeah, yeah. Well, I think if you want to get ripped, and I mean ripped buff, yeah. I think you have to, like, What's push it to sore. Yeah, to where you can't lift that last one. Yeah, I haven't gotten into, into that kind of lifting yet. Oh, Dad, by the way, I saw the douchebag. Yeah, I got a shot of him, too. But when the lockers apart. 
when the guy asked you to put the weights back, yeah. what tone of voice did he say it in? Uh, kind of like informative, not like... He wasn't like rude? No, he was just, uh, just uh, trying to say the way things are done around here. And I wanted to just give him the message like, hey man, if you fuck with my dad again, there's going to be a problem. For some reason, that guy pisses me off more than the steam room Nazi. I don't know why. Just to think, you can go up to someone you don't know in public. Yeah. Say, hey, put the weights back. Yeah. Well, it pisses them off that we're still here because, you know, a lot of these people, they're just like one week wonders. Yeah, yeah. But when you... When you and I go into the gym, we're always laughing and talking. Yeah. And we just stroll through all these macho douchebags. Yeah. Like, fuck you. Yeah. You know? It's such a standoffish environment. Uh -huh. So, I don't know. Fuck. I am going to be sore. I can feel it. That was a good workout. Yeah, that was. I, I feel sore, man. I don't usually feel like this when we leave. I felt sore coming in here. When's the last time you lifted? Uh, two days. I did like a hundred push. I, I did a hundred push-ups three days ago. Uh huh. Here's the thing: when I started lifting, I could only do ten push-ups. That's it. Yeah. Then I would do twenty times four or five to get a hundred. Yeah. Now I'm doing 30 push-ups four times. That's 120. That's a lot for me. Yeah. Thanks, God. So, Dad, uh, the wood cutting. Is there any way I could do that tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Because I got to finish editing this video. I can't wait to post this vlog. It's going to be so awesome. Because I haven't really made a vlog vlog yet. Customers. Yeah, and you just start eating more. You know, if you want, you want to show the results. You know, the when I start lifting, I this is what God, this is what I eat. Greek yogurt has a lot of protein. Oatmeal, um, cottage cheese, meat, steak, uh, quinoa. I think. Uh -huh. It's apparently really good to eat lettuce, or no, chicken and broccoli. Oh yeah, yeah. Someone commented on my channel earlier and they had a Big Lenny picture as their avatar. Uh -huh. I've told you about Big Lenny. Big Lenny is like a big ogre of a man who, who brags about having sex with transvestites. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it's funny because he's super MAGA. He's like a Trump supporter. Yeah. But he, he this is how crazy Big Lenny is. You know how you can go on Facebook Live, Instagram Live? Yeah. He went on Instagram Live, um, which you're not allowed to show nudity or nothing. Yeah. At a whorehouse having sex with a trans prostitute. Yeah. And it, he's fully, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. He's like, because he calls his fan base the maniacs. Yeah. He's like, let's let's let the maniac see this. And then it's him with a prostitute. <laughs> it, it is so funny. Well, I told you that story that me and Barry were walking in and that autistic kid. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he was uh, hey guys, what are you what's so funny? What are you talking about? And he looked to be about 18 or 19. And he had he looked fairly normal. He looked normal almost, but you could tell right away that who's autistic or... yeah and I was like oh man funny you ask we were just talking about prostitutes uh -huh. oh really and I was like well what we were talking about is that guy John that Irishman at the door who I've gotten to know really well yeah really Walmart cool is the doorman yeah. uh huh uh, he's, me and him were standing there talking one day and this girl in a really short cut dress uh -huh. walked by us and she kind of smiled and she was pushing the cart and I was checking her out and I was like 
She didn't have anything in the car. Uh huh. I was like, man, that's that's fucking something. Just she was crazy. No, I said something called me about that guy. She's a prostitute. Oh. And I was like, I said, funny you say that because something different was there was just something that stood out to me about her that was different because we got them in here all the time. We run them out of here. Whoa. And so I'm like. Well, if you think about it, where does everybody go modern day? To Walmart. Walmart. So they yeah. would fish around at Walmart. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I've never seen... I've been propositioned at Times Square once. This guy gave me a shitty joint. Uh -huh. And I took a hit off of it because I guess he wanted to see if I was a cop. Yeah. And he tried... And, you know, Times Square is known for prostitutes. It, or it used to be. Yeah. But sometimes I think the only reason I've never been with a pro it's never presented itself to me, the opportunity. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. It's death on a cracker. This one girl I used to run around with, uh, I, she was really good looking. She was like a, 11. And one day she was at a party, me and Shannon were at. And she kept getting calls from guys. And I was like, be honest with me, are you a prostitute? She said, I'm not a prostitute, I'm an escort. Oh. Which is like a more upper class. Problem. Yeah. But yeah. this girl, she was so hot that I could see. She was probably making bank oh doing, my doing God. it. Yeah, I, it's it's insane. You know, especially with media going. Bitch. Fuck that guy. Look, at, look, he has a dent in his car probably because of that. Driving like an asshole. You know has, who has road rage is Barry. Yeah. He was telling me the other day. But Barry's like a, a keyboard warrior tough guy. Yeah. I, I don't think Barry would get into a fight. Or was he a good fighter when he was younger? When he was, yeah. When he was younger. The, the medical industry uh -huh. tries to dampen down. Uh, like Yeah, they don't want any natural cures. They, they actually need, you know... Like, I've been reading, uh, some people take larger than normal doses of vitamin C powder. Uh huh. So you're supposed to take a thousand milligrams a day. But, yeah. Uh, but uh, if you take 3,000 milligrams, apparently your body processes exactly what it needs and expends the rest. Uh huh. But I started taking it for energy, and it does, it gives you energy. But did you know that um, if you're addicted to opiates or heroin or any opiate, if you take large doses of vitamin C, it completely stops withdrawal. Oh, wow. It's crazy. Yeah. And the rehab industry, is an in it's a business. They don't want that out there. No. And, and I watched enough videos of doctors saying, yep, vitamin C powder, that's all you need. Put the fentanyl and shit out there now. It's going to be nothing short of suicide. You know, these people that smoke crack or, or do heroin, it's like... That's Russian roulette. It doesn't know that's, that's why Suboxone, some people don't like it, but it honestly, if you're one of those people that's so addicted to heroin that you can't... For me, heroin is overrated, and I just sort of put it down. Yeah. Um, like, there's this YouTuber who was on Suboxone for years, and he made a video saying, I think I'm done with Suboxone, I'm going to get off of it. Yeah. Two months later, he o overdosed. Yeah. So, for me... I, I, I quit heroin by taking Kratom. Now, Kratom doesn't um, block opiates. Like Suboxone and Methadone, Yeah. you can't get high off of heroin when you're on those things. Yeah. So for years, I, for a couple years, I took Kratom. So I wasn't, re I wasn't doing heroin or fentanyl. So that kind of, you know, I, that shit is so fucking dangerous. I was, have you ever tried that Adderall? Oh, I love, yeah, Adderall's great. That red pill? Well, it could be red. Does it have little beads in it? Uh, it's a capsule with little beads. Oh, I've seen those things, too. Uh, uh, these things are red. Uh, no, I know what you're talking okay. about. Okay, what are yeah. you talking about? And they're yellow beads or something? Yeah, what are you talking about? This stuff is just like a, uh, a regular pill. It would look like a... Like a Percocet or something, but it's red. What does it do to you? It, it just for withdrawal. It doesn't make you high. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's Suboxone. Is it? Yeah. Um, 
usually Suboxone comes in strips, but there's also pills and they're called stop signs because they look like stop signs. Yeah. You might not be talking about Suboxone. I don't know what you're um, Or Adderall. I don't know what it is. There's think. Suboxone and Methadone and uh, those are pretty much the opiate withdrawal pills. Yeah. The best thing you could do for opiate withdrawal is to take some Xanax as long as you're responsible. Xanax, Ativan, Valium, or Klonopin really, uh -huh. really help with withdrawal. But once you get on Suboxone, Suboxone just keeps you addicted to opiates, you know? Yeah. And it's getting pulled over with Suboxone is serious. They treat that worse than heroin. I don't wow. know why. I don't know why. Damn, you wouldn't think it would, you know? Mm -hmm. Unless you had a prescription for it. But, uh... See, here's what's happening with the drug industry. A lot of younger people, specifically Gen Z, they're not really getting addicted to fentanyl and meth anymore. They're doing the online drugs, like Kratom, uh, Fenobut is one. Uh, what else? Kratom, Fenobut. I guess there's not that many others, but... Uh, there's... Um, there's... a. Um, People are getting addicted to taking 20 Benadryl. Mm, and Bene yeah. Benadryl is a delirium. And I, I don't know why people do it. Because one, when you overdose on Benadryl, yeah. your body basically starts dying. Your kidneys yeah, and your organs. That's horrible. Yeah. And, and these young kids, they take it and they see spiders. Oh they, my they, God. they see shadow people. And they, see, they all report seeing this guy called the Hat Man. Oh, I've heard, I've seen that. The hat I've man? seen, yeah. 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 It's kind of like Slenderman. Yeah. Oh, Slenderman. That's the yeah. one I, I, I do remember. Isn't yeah. it weird though that like a bunch of people report seeing this hat? Man? Same thing. Yeah. I interviewed this guy that was addicted to Benadryl uh, online. I interviewed him. Oh my god. And he, I, I told him, I said, how terrifying is it to see the hat man? Yeah. And he said it was actually comforting. Because it felt like the hat man was like the king of all the shadow people. Yeah. And he made them go away. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's really sad. That the, oh, God, yeah. Like, taking a that, bunch of Benadryl and seeing spiders and shadow people, that sounds like a nightmare. That's what uh, these cough syrups back in the 70s used to have codeine in them. Oh, yeah, yeah. And people would get hooked on, like, Robitussin. Oh, yeah, uh huh? And then they changed it to some synthetic drug that would make people violently ill. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know. They were taking it thinking they were doing the same old, same old and then they were getting sick. Extremely sick from it. Hallucinating. Yeah, when I was young I robo-tripped a good amount. It's not fun, really. Um, but the rappers, you ever heard of lean? They take lean? It's promethazine cough syrup with codeine in it yeah and i i've never taken it uh, but apparently that like remember that slim jesus song yeah drill, drill time yeah he says off the promethazine walk around like a kickstand yeah so it would make you lean so people yeah. called it lean yeah but when you withdraw off of lean pe people always reported that their stomach would really hurt which oh. is unusual. Like, yeah. I know opiate withdrawal, you're supposed to throw up and have stomach pain. I never had that. I never threw up or had stomach pain. Yeah. But it's pretty hard to get off of. Um, yeah, that is, that is a horrible, horrible. Oh, my and, God. And, and the rappers were promoting it. You know, every rapper. Yeah. Like, there was this, this rapper named Lil White, and he had that famous song, Oxycontin. Uh-huh. Um, Oxycontin, Xanax, bars, method, you know. And grandmas were going to his rap shows, and they were saying, you killed my son. Yeah. He overdosed listening to your song. Yeah. And he said, he's like, that song was a blessing and a curse because it put him on the map. Yeah. But also a lot of people died.